Welcome, this is Zahn with Repro Products. Today's video is a tutorial on how to work with hyperlinks in Bluebeam Review 2016. Here I have a PDF file open, and if I use my tab access command, the orange arrow button in the upper left corner, I can see that I have the command for links turned on. That command is located over here. I can left click and hold that and change its physical position and location if I need to, either here or you know, docking it above or below or to the left or right of an existing panel or to the other side as well. I'm going to leave it where it stands. There is under hyperlinks the command to create a hyperlink here. You can create hyperlinks several ways, either automatically or manually. If I want to create hyperlinks automatically, for example, I want to create hyperlinks that help me designate where all the sheets are. All these uh, A101, A102, I can set these up to be hyperlinks so they jump to that page. In order to do that level of hyperlinking, I would head over to the File tab of the ribbon and then Batch and then Link. And this applies to um, the Bluebeam Review Extreme version of the software. So if I click New, It'll ask me to input the files that it wants to use and work with. I'm going to click Add Open Files because that's just a file that I'm working with right now. I can add additional files and other folders and their subfolders and the data that's within those subfolders if I need to. I can click Next and then from there I can specify the area that I want it to look at on that piece of paper. And I want it to look at this here. I can then click OK and look at the settings of what it's scanning and looking for. And in here, I can tell it for search purposes to include or exclude certain data based upon filtering characters. I can click Generate, and it will go through that file, and it will find all the possible links that it can make. When I'm finished, I'll click Link Options, and I can make adjustments. For example, the color of the link, the line width style, and the different styles that are available. So perhaps I'll do a highlight instead and we'll highlight it in green. And then I'll click OK and now if I hit the run to actually run the batch process it'll create all the hyperlinks. I click finish and close and you'll notice here in the hyperlinks it's all listed and the hyperlinks are here. They're green. I can click any one of these links and it will take me to that document. Moreover, if I head over to a sheet that's using any of these annotation symbols that have the values, A203, 203, 203, um, you can see they're all hyperlinks. So I can click and it will take me to that page. So that's one way to create hyperlinks and that's via an automatic method. What if you want to create a hyperlink via manual method? And there are several ways to approach the action that applies to that hyperlink. For example, something as simple as saying, I want to create a hyperlink where if somebody touches this logo, it goes to that site. In order to do that, I click the command for hyperlink right here, or I head over to um, markups and I click hyperlink here as well. I then can draw a rectangular region that specifies the hyperlink area that somebody can touch. When I do this, it opens up the action button or window. And in here, I can specify the behavior. So for this first example, I can click hyperlink and put in the site address. And then click OK when I'm done. Now that that hyperlink is created, if you want to, by the way, see the hyperlink, uh, because right now it's set up to be invisible, you can right click that so you can select it and then head over to the properties and specify uh, that it's visible, okay? And if you don't do that, then you're not going to be able to see it. So if I click this now, it will actually open up a web tab within Bluebeam Review to that actual website. So that's one way to create a hyperlink manually. Another way to create a hyperlink manually is perhaps you wanna create a link where it takes you to a file or a folder. Here is a fire extinguisher cabinet. So if I head over and create a new web tab and do the Google search and look for fire extinguisher cabinet, 
Let's just do a, sh a search for one. It doesn't have to be specific. Let's look at this one right here. Um, and I like this one, so I'm going to find the file, download Synodal data sheet here. Okay. So here's that data file. And uh, I'm going to actually right click that and say, uh, do, 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 go to the properties and verify. Okay, so now that that's there, I want to take this file, or better yet, let's do this. Let's head back to this site, copy this, and I'll open up uh, Internet Explorer because I want to be able to manually download it. So I'm going to click this. It's going to open up the file within Internet Explorer using Bluebeam's extension plugin. And from here, I can save the file. And I'll save it to my temp folder. And now that that's done, if I head over here and create my hyperlink for that region, then I can actually say, open a particular file. And I can click this button, the three little dots, and tell it to open up this file. Click OK, and the hyperlink is created. Again, right-click the hyperlink and click Visible if you need to see it, and also adjust the line weight and things like that if you have to. So now that you've done this, if I left-click it, it should open up that PDF file. Another way you can create the hyperlink is instead of it linking to a file or a product OEM manufacturing page or something like that, you can tell it to go to a specific subfolder. Uh, let's say, for example, I want to create a hyperlink of this area here so that it goes to a folder that has, say, maybe pictures or something like that. Hyperlink, create the rectangular region, tell it to open a folder, and tell it to go where you want it to go. So I'm going to tell it to go to this folder for now. And I'm going to click OK. So now that it's created, if I click this link, it should open up Windows Explorer directly to that folder. And that's a good example of how you would want to do maybe RFIs or addendums. And instead of them jumping to the particular RFI or addendum, you want to take it to their master subfolder where all of those are listed. So they can actually get access to all of them and know which one's the oldest and which one's the newest RFI or addendum. Other ways that you can create hyperlinking. Uh, let's go to another area of the drawing. And let's say, for example, well, let's go from a plan view. And I want to create a hyperlink to go to a place. I'll go ahead and I'll create a hyperlink of, say, this area right here for the um, receptionist desk. And in the action, I can tell it to do several things. I can either tell it to jump to a, the PDF and a specific page on the PDF, or I can tell it to go to a place. A place in Bluebeam Review is just an area that you have defined with a given name. For example, if I click Create, I can give that name, say, Entry Vestibule. And I can say a snapshot rectangular area of this. Click OK, and that place is created. I'll then click OK, and that hyperlink is created. And if I click on it, it should jump to that page and zoom to fit. If I right click that hyperlink and edit the action, we can also set it to go to a space. A space in uh, Bluebeam Review is an area that you defined which is similar to a room object or a space object in Revit and it helps you just to define that area for markup and organization of the markups and the purposes of how you use them. So as it stands I don't have a space so I can't actually assign it to a space I need to actually create the space first. So I'm going to cancel out of this and head over to spaces so I want to make sure my command for spaces is turned on which it is and I'll click Spaces, and then I'll click the ability to add a space, and I'll define the space. Let's say it's this one right here. This is an office space, so I'll do this, and I'll call it Office Space A. 
once it's defined, I can right click and go to the properties of that space and I can give it color and opacity. And you'll see that that space is defined and it's set up that way. Uh, you can automatically create the hyperlink of that space by using this little icon that pops up when you put your mouse over the name of the space too. So if I click this, then that hyperlink is created and I can click wherever I want to put that hyperlink. Um, so let's say it's something silly like the front entrance doorway. Now I've created that hyperlink and again if I right click and go and say make it visible, then it's visible. If I select this hyperlink, it should jump to that particular space. Um, and so those are all the different ways that you can create hyperlinks um, of your uh, project. And the snapshot, the last one, is just a way for you to specify an area without giving it a name. So let's say, for example, you want to, um, if I do a rectangular region of this and tell it to a hyperlink over here to tell it to go to a, a different area of the document, I can do so. A good prime example would be this section here. It says 2A302. If I use the hyperlink command, I can hyperlink and highlight that text and tell it to go to a region, a rectangular region that I specify. So I click Get Rectangle, and then I want to go to that A302. So we'll head over to A302, and it's number two. So we'll zoom out a little bit, and there's number two. And so I'll define that rectangular region like that. Now that it's finished, I click OK and that hyperlink is created. So if I head back to that sheet, then I should be able to use that hyperlink. You can see it's blue. And if I, again, right click that hyperlink and make it visible, people will visually see that there's a hyperlink. If I click it, um, then I should be able to go directly to that particular view. And those are all the different ways to create hyperlinks in Ruby Review. Thank you for watching.